The cowherd and the weaver girl hold a special place in Chinese culture, going back to ancient times, when stories were shared through talking rather than writing. This story tells of Zhenyu and Liu Lang, who fall in love despite being from different worlds. Their love is forbidden. Yes, they strive to be together. Every year during the Qixi festival, their story is remembered and celebrated, a reminder of love's enduring power. Over the years, the story has been passed down from one generation to the next, changing a bit with with each telling, but always keeping its heart. It's a story that speaks to people everywhere because it's about love overcoming challenges. Something everyone can understand, whether in books, paintings, or performance. The cowherd and the weaver girl continue to touch hearts and bring people together, showing how stories can connect us across time and space. Let's listen this story together. What we call a cowherd is not just an ordinary cowherd. And the weaving maid is not just an ordinary weaver. Legend has it that they were originally celestial stars, one named the Weaver Star, and the other named the Cowherd Star. The Weaver Maid and the Cowherd fell in love, deeply connected, and devoted to each other. However. The queen mother of the west forbade their love. When the queen mother learned of their love, she became furious and vowed and to separate them. As the weaver maid was the youngest daughter of the queen mother, she was merely exiled and taxed with weaving clouds as punishment. The cowherd, on the other hand, Was banished to the mortal realm, becoming a true cowherd. Since his banishment, although the weaver maid loved weaving beautiful clothes, she often wept and felt lonely due to missing the cowherd. She sat by the loom, weaving beautiful clothes, hoping that one day the cowherd would return to the heavens. One day, the daughters pleaded with the queen mother to let them play in the earthly jade pool. The queen mother, in a good mood, agreed. Seeing the weaver maid's constant sadness, they collectively requested the queen mother to allow the weaver maid to accompany them. Touched by their plea. And empathizing with the punished weaver maid, the queen mother granted their request, allowing the weaver maid to join them at the jade pool. Meanwhile, after his banishment, the cowherd was born into a peasant family and lived a humble life. After his parents passed away, he lived. With his brother's family, however, they treat him harshly, giving him only an old cow and a broken cart before parting ways and leaving him to fend for himself. From then on, the cowherd and the old cow relied on each other. They built a small home together, living and toiling the fields just to get by. Many years passed. And one day, the old cow suddenly spoke, telling the cowherd, "Today, go to the jade pool. There are some celestial maidens bathing there. Hide the red celestial garment." Curious, the cowherd asked why he should hide the celestial maiden's clothing. The old cow replied. The celestial maiden wearing the red gar- garment will become your wife. Hearing this, the
the cowherd quietly went to the jade pool and hid among the reeds, waiting for the celestial maidens to arrive. As predicted by the old cow, the celestial maidens soon arrived and began bathing in the pool. Despite his nervousness, the cowherd followed the old cow's instruction and took the red celestial garment. As the celestial maidens noticed his presence and hurriedly flew away, the cowherd approached the one left without clothing, offering to return it in exchange for her promise to become his wife. Upon closer inspection, the weaver maid was astonished to find that the man before her was none other than the cowherd she had longer for. She agreed to his proposal, and thus the weaver maid became the cowherd's wife. After their marriage, the cowherd and the weaver maid lived happily and peacefully, eventually having two children. They worked together, farming and weaving, loving each other dearly. Time passed until one day, the cowherd hurried back from the fields to inform the weaver maid of the sudden death of the old cow. He revealed to her the dying wish of the old cow. After my death, skin me and keep my height. Some someday, wearing it, and you will be able to fly to the heavens, and re and reunite with the weaver maid. The old cow was actually the celestial golden blue star, a good friend of the cowherd. When the cowherd was banished to the mother realm, the golden blue star. Pleaded on his behalf, but was also banished by the Queen Mother. Even in the model realm, the Golden Blue Star cared for his friend, Nels. Upon his death, he requested the cowherd to use his height to make clothing. The next day. As the sky roared with wind, a gust of wind escorted the weaver maid and her children into the sky. Remembering his friend's words, the cowherd donned the hide and brush to save the weaver maid and the children. However, just then, the queen mother arrived, pulling a gold hair pin from her hair. She drew it between them, and instantly, a vast river surged between the weaver maid and the cowherd, separating them. Separated by the river, the weaver maid and the cowherd carried out in despair, moved by their steadfast love. The queen mother agreed to let the cowherd stay in the heavens, allowing them to meet once a year on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month. Every year on this day, countless magpies flock to form a bridge over the river for them, and the shadow of this celestial bridge. Can still be faintly seen, the night sky. The stories of Liu Lang and Zhi Nü ends at here. The cowherd and the weaver girl is a treasure tale from Chinese culture that has been cherished for centuries, showcasing that enduring impasse of. Storytelling, in conveying important lessons and cultural values.
This beloved folk tale is annually celebrated during the Qixi Festival, a time when familiars come together to share stories and traditions, highlighting its timeless relevance and significance. Passed down through generation via oral tradition, this story serves as a poignant. Reminder of the power of love to overcome obstacle, and the resilience of the human spirit. Through the tri- trials faced by Zhinu and Liu Lang, two characters from different worlds, audiences are invited to reflect on themes of sacrifice, perseverance. And the interconnectedness of humanity. The story not only explores the depths of romantic love, but also celebrates the cultural values of a familiar duty and the harmony of the cosmos. Personally, I am deeply moved by the cowhead and the river girl, as it resonates. With universal emotions and speaks to the enduring human desire for connection and belonging, its ability to captivate audience of all ages underscores its timeless appeal and its enduring legacy as a cultural treasure. Um, today I want to share some history and legend. Um, from China, and it's about the really famous building, the Great Wall. So the Great Wall is a famous building in China, and there is a lot of history and legend behind it. Those stories usually give people like more knowledge about the Great Wall, or like make a history like more interesting. So I want to talk about the legend that related to the Great Wall, and the name of the legend is Meng Jiangnu Cry the Great Wall. So, Meng Meng Jiangnu Cry the Great Wall is one of the China's、um, four great love stories, and the background of the story takes place in the Qing Dynasty. So at that time, um, Qing Qing Shi Huang. Submit many people to build the Great Wall, and many workers died of like extension. But in fact, the original、uh, story for Meng Jiangnu cry the Great Wall is um from the um Qi Liang's wife, which the first scene in Zuo Zhuan. Zuo Zhuan is a history book that records. Records the history of the spring and autumn period in, uh, in the Xian China, from seven two two BC to four six eight BC, a total of like a hundred and fifty five years of spring and autumn period history. And I found this legend on internet. This legend is pretty famous in, um, Chinese legend. As I、uh, as I said, it's a China for great love stories, and also it's not really hard to find this legend. Um. Then let's start with the story. Um. During the Qing Dynasty, there lived a kind and beautiful woman named Meng Jiangnu. One day, while she was doing housework in the yard, she suddenly discovered a person hiding under the grape fields. She was startled and was about to scream, but the man begged her like, "Don't shout! Don't shout! Help me! My name is Fan Xiliang, and I am here to escape." It turned out that Qin Shi Huang was arranging people to work as the coolers in order to build the Great Wall. <laughs> Many people died of hunger and infected. Meng Jiangnu rescued res-、uh, rescued him, and then Fan Xiliang. Fell in love with her. Also, Fan Xiliang was a good symbol and had good、uh, features, so that Meng Jiangnu also fell in love with Fan Xiliang.、Um, after they 
obtaining their parents con、uh, parents consent, they planning to become a couple. So on the day of the wedding, um, the Mon family was decorated with lanterns and colors. The house was full of gusto. Um, and the scene was full of joy. The sky is getting dark, and the wedding drinks are、um, gradually going home. Suddenly, after hearing the crowing of chickens and the barking of dogs, a group of fictitious officers and soldiers broke in and locked them up with chains without any explanation, and forced French land to war against the Great War. The beautiful, happy event came to nothing. Wang Jianyu was filled with grief and anger, and also she missed her husband day and night. She thought, instead of sitting at home and worrying, it would be better to go and go to the Great Wall to find, um, Fan Xiliang. So Wang Jianyu immediately packed packed her luggage and hit the road. Wang Jianyu kept. Walking regardless of the rain and shine, one day she walked to a wilderness with no village in front and no shopping hand. It was getting dark and there was no one around, so she ran into the temple. The temple was quite large. The grass is only half a person deep, and there is green instead of the god. She was only a young woman, alone and very scared. But she no longer cared about it. She found it a corner and fell fell asleep. At night, she dreamed that she, uh, and her husband were reading, at the dinner table. Suddenly, she heard a knock on the door, and thought it was a group of government officials breaking in to arrest someone. She woke up with a start. It turned out that wind was、um, blowing the doors and windows of of the Renaissance Temple. She sighed, looked at the sky, picked out the package, and hit the road again. One day, she escaped from walking, and had chills all over. Just when she wanted to rest, she fainted. When she woke up, she found herself lying on a hot a hot bed. In her hometown, the landlady gave her some soup and some ginger water. She was extremely grateful. She felt danger and struggled to get up and continue on her way, but the landlady pulled her, with tears streaming down her face, and said, "I know you want to find your husband, but now your body was so hot and cold. How can I let you go to?" Look at your appearance. Wang Jianyu, at her, uh, figured out that her feet was covered in a blood pimples. Then she stayed at <clears throat> her eldest mother's house for another two days. But before she recovered, she left again. The old lady cried and said, "What a good wife this is! God." Please do the good job and rescue couples all over the world. Wang Jianyu finally arrived at the place where the Great Wall was being built. She asked the、uh, migrant worker building the Great Wall, "Do you know where Fan Xiliang is?" When she asked others, they said they didn't know. When she asked another person, they still shook their head. She didn't know how many people she had asked before. Later, she learned that major worker from neighbor neighboring village were building the Great Wall. Major worker from the neighbor village, as Helen led her to find the major workers who were building the Great Wall with Fan Xiliang. Along the way, she experienced the wind, forest, frost, rain, snow, and walk through mountains and rivers. Wang Jianyu did not cry bitterly. Nor did she shed any tears. In the end, she reached the Great Wall with um, pursuing a deep love with her husband. 
At this time, the Great Wall was already composed from many competitor seats. Meng Jianli went to one concert site after another, though her husband was nowhere to be seen. Finally, she pulled out the court and asked a group of the maid worker who was about to go to work, Do you have Fan Xiliang here? The migrant worker said, There is such a person, a newcomer. When Meng Jianli heard this, she was very happy. She quickly asked, Where is he? <clears throat> but the, the worker said, He is dead. His body has been built into the Great Wall. When Meng Jianli suddenly heard the bad news, her vision went dark. She felt sad and burst into tears. She cried for three days and three nights. She cried until the sky was dark and the earth was dark. Even the heaven and the earth were moved. The sky became extremely gloomy. The wind became more and more breathed, and with a crash. A section of the great wall fell down, refilling Fan Shiliang's body. Fan Shiliang's body. Meng Jianli tears fell on his bloody face. She finally saw her, her husband, but he could never see her again because he had been killed by the Kuro Qin Shu Fang. So the legend has been passed down for more than 2,000 years. And the story appears as early as five, um, 500 BC. Its main purpose is um, to tell people how difficult, difficult to build a great wall. They lost many lives and paid a lot of price to build a great wall. The background of the story is a tragic love story that happened during the construction of the great wall. The legend of the Meng Jianlu was officially included in the fourth wave of the National Incredible Culture History List. I think that this legend is pretty interesting, and I quite like this legend is because although the story is related to the history, but and the story is ultimately a trendy, but the story in is not boring like it's a really interesting story and also it includes the history of the great wall and i think like if people have interested the background of the china or the background of the great wall they, i think like they may like this legend okay. thank you so that's not a story. So a long time ago, in the olden days of the Eastern Jin Dynasty, there was a fish named Nan Zhang. He lived in a quiet little town of the Uling, nestled on the banks of the Widing River. Jin wasn't one for the hustle and bustle of city life. He was a simple man with a simple pleasure, finding solace in the gentle lap of the river against his worn out boat and the thrill of the catch. Fishing wasn't just his livelihood, it was his life, his meditation, his connection to parts of the nature. On the morning, that seems like any other. John sat before down, the sky still pinned with the brush strokes on last night's dream. He rode along the river, lost in thought. His ox are cutting through the water with the rhyme that matched the beating of his heart. As the sun climbed by the horizon, casting a golden glow over everything, June realized he had drifted further than usual into a waters unexplored. The river, a twisting separate on with on shining blue, led him aside so breathtaking that for a moment. He forgot about fishing, the stretching along banks of the strands was a forest of the peach trees. It was an ocean of the soft pink and vibrant green the likes of which he had never seen. 
These trees stood guard a bottle lion of the blossom with no other species daring to break their ranks. The air was thick and their sweet perfume and the grass on their foot was a blanket of the brightest green, sprinkled with the fallen petals that danced in a gentle breeze. Zhang's courtesy was a fire that needed to be stoked, so he guided his boat along the stream, dipping into the heart of the enhanced forest. He rode until the water widespread of its source, leading him to a small mountain crowding the Stream's origin. There are narrow opening back to him, a sl sliver of the mystery in the rocket fake facet. With the spirit of the explorer passing through his veins, John moored his boat and stepped into the unknown. The entrance to the cave was mouth that swallowed him whole, a tight passage that al only allowed one single traveler. Driven into a caution, his hand brushing against the damp walls, his eyes turning in the dim lights after a dozen steps or so. The wood transformed. The narrow throats of the cave opened into a vast, bright valley, a hidden gym within the mountain clutches. Jen's eye widened in a while before he laid a flat, white land, a secret village that time for had forgotten. Rows of the neat houses stood in a quiet harmony, filled and ripped with the promise, a bountiful harvest and a pound of the mirror, the clear blue of the sky. Blueberry chairs waved in their silent greeting while bamboo stalks stood tall and proud. The path that was through the fields were like Venice. Influenced the lies, life in the landscape, and everything twist and turn. Nothing is like the thing that he has experienced before. The music of the real life filled in the air. The cackle of the hens, the bark of the dogs, the laughter of the children. It was symphony of the simple life. A song that spoke in the content and peace. Villagers. <coughs> in a, that they were widespread and of tradition, work them with the hand that told story and generation past. Their face, edged with surprise, turned toward John as he stepped into their world. They approached him with the caution of the deer in white, their eyes wide with wonder. Where did you come from? They asked. How did you find out hidden heaven? Jin shared his story, his voice, a bridge from one world to another. The villager listened, their face of emotion, joy, wonder, and thought of fear. They welcomed him with their open arms, their hospitality as warm as the sun that kissed their land. They offered him wine, rich and heady, and food that was very in sense of their hard work and love. News of Zhang arrived rift through the village like a stone cast upon the water. More faces appeared, each marked with the same blend of the amusement and delight. They shared their own tale to Zhang, a history that soon led was both sore of pride and whisper of sorrow. Their ancestor, they revealed, had once been citizen of the world beyond the peach trees. When the Qing dynasty crumbled into trials, war had ravaged the land, and the fear had driven their forebears into the arms of unknown. They had sought reef in the Salish Valley, severing tie with the world that has become a tool painful injure. Since then, they have lived in this self-made sanitary, a bubble where they can angles of the outside world could not reach. They spoke <coughs> of high dynasty, if it were mine. A 
tale told by a flickering light of the fear fire. We and Jin Dynasty were names that held no meaning for them. They had created a world of their own. A world that was untamed by the bloodshed and the ambition that so often married the animals of history. They had cultivated a life seniority where the rhythm of the season dedicated the kindness of their days and land provide for their need. John Jin, bearing witness the living testament to peace, shared the tales of the outside world, of the empires and uprising, of the poets, of the philosopher, of the ad and the flow dynasty like the tides of the cosmic sea. The villagers listening in rapture and yet distant, their expression ting with the northerly sorrow of for a world they had frustrated, but also with relief for the calamity they had in escape. Day turned into night, night to day, and John find himself enveloped in the life of the peach blossom spring. The villagers with their gentle ways show him the fruit of their, their trails, feel their yelled strand, the arcans heavy with fruit, and ponds teeming with the fish, they live by work of their hands, by sweat of their bars, and their love in their hearts. They celebrate life's simple joys, a child's laughter, a whisper of the wind through a bamboo, the satisfaction of the day's work well done. Each family in the village extended the innovation of their home, where John was treated not as a stranger, but as long-lost brother. They donned a meal where every dish told a story and of the earth's generosity. The wine they shared was not just a drink, but also a company a sharing life incense. And through it all, they spoke of their dreams, their values, and their legacy that they wished to pass on to their child children. A legacy that not of gold of the conquest, but of the harmony with nature and each other. As the day passed, John became a testament woven into their community. His threads centering with their inner dance and the friendship and mutual respect. But as with all tales, there come to a more moment of parting. The villagers understanding as ever getting a big giant farewell. They bore no ill with for his departure. But they made him promise one thing that he would keep secret of their existence for the revelation of the peach blossom spring could shatter the delicate of the balance of the cyclic Antopia. With the heart heavily with the white departure, John made his way back to the mouth of the cave. He stepped lower, a glazed line skin on the beauty of the valley. He found his boots right where he had left as if it too had been waiting personally for his return. With the final glance back, he set off, returning the path of the stream had carved through the peach forest. As he rode back in the world, he knew he marked the way with a sign only would understand. A breadcrumb trail back to the world wild heaven. Upon his return to Uling, the reality of his di discovery was upon him. It was a treasure too pre precious to remain hidden, and yet too fragile to expose to voracious of the outside world. 
He sought out the perf perfect a man power influence and share his tail. The perfect driven a mix of the crusty and the growth of the glory organized a search of the party to follow Jing back till a peach blossom spring. But as fate would have it, the marketers Jing had left where either the Cyprotics or has been claimed by the element. The search parties wander lost in twist and turn in the river. The forest sending silence, guarding its secrets with the centralist resolve. In Nanyang, words of Jiang adventure reach the ears of the Liu Zijie, a scholar with the soul that's burned for the Positive and the profound. To him, Peach Blossom Spring was not just a place, it was a symbol of that was a pearl and untouched by the work darkness. He dreamed of the walking its path, of breathing its air, but dreams, like all things, are the mercy of time, a tide, literally feel it, a sickness that stole his strength and eventually his life. His dream of peach blossom spring departure with his final breath. And so, peach blossom spring passed into the realm of the legend, a widespread the story paradise lost, or perhaps never found. It's become a beacon of the hope for those weird by the world. A reminder that somewhere, perhaps just beyond the uh, beyond the river. There might be a place where humanity's thief as it's always meant to be, free in harmony with nature world. For Zhang, the fisherman from Wuling, it was memory and touched into his soul. A tale for the ages and a secret he would carry till the end of his day. And that is, this is the expense of the tale of the peach Blossom Spring, a story wonder, a mystery that was flow through the river, touching time, hearts, and constantly imagination for a generation. Today's story, why it is so important? It influenced the Chinese so society until now. This story was written by a writer in a long time ago in the dynasty of the China. It still keep until now, and the reason is so impl important. Eric will help you to find it. So having a woven of the tale of the peach blossom spring, that step back and the pointer. It's placed the tapestry culture folk when this story is in Chinese as Tao Hua Yuan, was painted by Tao Yuan Ming, as the Eastern Jin Dynasty poet around. 421 AD. It has percolated through Chinese culture and literature for over 1,600 years, becoming one of the most prevalent and enduring legends. It's not limited, it's a testament to its proud fronts, resonance, and readers and listeners generation after generation. The story of this peach blossom spring is not just a fairy tale, it's an encapsulate a deep sentence yearning of the utopia, a common thread in the human narrative. It's a parable of the simpler, dialect life that, that exists in harmony with the nature, untouched by the chaos and the corruption of the society. Throughout history, this longing was, has been a burn for weary souls, battered by the tumultuous wave of their own epochs. In time of war, family or political on heaven, tales like these offer mental refuge. A temporary escape to a place of the peace and the tranquility. It's no wonder what is the story has been passed down through the ages. Its message of simplicity and the priority offers stark contracts to the complexity and the compromise of the real world. 
The purpose of the story beyond the surface narrative is motivate its serving as a critical of the social ills and the limits for loss and the innocence of the virtue. It's a mirror reflecting the disconnect, disconnect between the humanity and the desire for peace and a harsh reality of life. It also highlights the choice between the ignorance and the knowledge posing that question whether it's better to live in a state based for on awareness or to face the world. Personally, in this channel, I would say I find the, this story very um, competitive and rich with meaning. Its beauty lies not just a large discrimination of the hidden village, but also its profound subtext and emotion ever close. It's a story that invites reflection on our modern life, on a balance between progress and privation, and the, on the values we hold dear. The narrative with its imagery and emotion that it's masterful and blend in the escapation and introspection. I believe that artists will find out you all artists will find out this story equally enhancing in our fast paced, often childish modern world. Who wouldn't be drawn to a tale secret par paradise, a place where world noise fades into a background and the simplest of the life comes to the fore? Furthermore, in an age where we increasingly disconnect with the natural and each other, the story serves as a poignant reminder what we lost in our percent of the advancement and the convenience. It's, I, it's this story encourage us to look inwards to evaluate our priorities and cherish the nature towards our connection within. So thank you for listening to my podcast to all the audience. A prince named Thuy and a uh, princess named Zhao. So to give you guys um, a clear information about this story because um, seeing this is a Vietnamese story so some of the word or some of the detail is a little bit hard to understand so I want to give um, my listener uh, my viewers uh, some basic context be, uh, context or historical background behind so you guys can easily understand so this is a story uh, talk about an um, country uh, my country before uh, is in old vietnam and we call it old lap um, it is really really long times ago and uh, also um, it's talk about when we are still have conflict uh, with china and we always have to um, be really be careful to keep our country from china uh, an old china before so this is a historical fair, uh, historical folk tale that uh, contribute to the cultural history of Vietnam. This story is always widely discussed, and um, especially it's included in official lessons of um, uh, Vietnamese student. I believe it's um, high school student and uh, this is a story imbued uh, with the history called culture of vietnam and as a vietnamese uh, i want to share um, my country history culture um, for all the listener um, and this this is also a really good folk tale that help listener uh, understand about my country culture history, uh, and also it have many valuable lessons behind, uh, which mean uh, I will tell you later, and you can uh, know about it. And this story also exists for a really, really long time. Seen my uh, grandparents or even more, and my parents, and it's still a really famous story for uh, every 
Vietnamese people until now. So I believe this story can interest people, uh, interest uh, everyone because um, it's talk about culture, history, and also has some detail about romantic love, uh, which means it's not gonna be boring uh, like other historical story. And it's also some detail about family love thing. So I will begin the story now. <clears throat> After defeating the last king of whom era, putting an end to a dynasty that renowned um, the kingdom for so long, Judge and Zunbum unified the two countries of Olap and Lakvit, splitting it into a new kingdom and named it Olap, which means Old Vietnam. Uh, he then proclaimed himself as a king, uh, so we call him King An Zunbum. And Olak became the country's uh, new center of power. With the strategic and geographic importance of Kolwa, uh, he declared it as the kingdom's capital and order for the fortress to build around the city for its walls to keep the capital safe from invaders. However, the construction of the spiral shape Sarado became difficult to uh, complete and each time they succeed to, in putting a wall, they crumble. According to uh, prophecy, a solution of evil spirit of the Hongwun Descendants seeking revenge for the loss of their kingdom prevent the walls from ever being put up. Seeking for the completion of the fortress to help protect uh, his range, King Anzung Wun burn incense, pray, make offering, and uh, evoke all the gods and grant him his desire. In answer to his prayer, the god sent a magical golden turtle to aid the king in accomplishing his wishes. After the wall, after the wall of the spiral fortress, Gola um, Sarado uh, solidly stood. The turtle was summoned by the gods. As a token to the king, he gave one of his claw and instructed Andung Bung to use it as a trigger of his royal crossbow. Such, he said, would uh, keep his uh, kingdom invincible. And indeed, with the help of his magic weapon, King Andung Bung succeeded in protecting his kingdom for a long time. Many times, the ambitious Chinese warlord Jiu Da attempted to invade Olap, which means uh, Vietnam, but he never succeeded. To divide his scheme, he um, negotiated a peace treaty with Olap, and shortly after, he sent his sons, Prince Thuy, to the king's court to ask for the hand of Princess Zhou for marriage, which means um, King An Zungbung's daughter. The king approved and Prince Hui came to live in the kingdom, which means now uh, King An Zungbung accept a uh, Chinese uh, prince to be his uh, son-in-law. Through Princess Zhou, Prince Thuy learned the secret of king and how the magic crossbow kept their kingdom protected. Secretly, he replaced the golden turtle's claw with an ordinary claw and seek permission from his wife to see his father. Before he left, he made a promise with Princess Zhou 
that in case a conflict arises, he will come back to look for her. Princess Zhou, in return, promises her husband that she will drop goose feather from her blanket along her track, so Prince Tui will be able to find her. Prince Tui bid his farewells and took the magic claw with him back to his father. Having processed the turtle's magical claw, Jiuda then raised a sudden attack against Oleg. But King Andungbung was confident that his crossbow would once again save his kingdom. He calmly faced Jiuda's army as they arrived at the gates of his fortress, took out his magic crossbow and fired at the invaders. But nothing happened. The king then realized that his golden Clara that used to kill thousands with a single shot has been replaced. Unprepared, the king and his army fled in panic. With Princess Zhou behind his horse, the king fled to the south. However, when he reached uh, the seashore, there was no ship in sight. In desperation, the king again called on the god for help. The golden turtle sent by God emerged from the water and appeared before Anzungvung. The turtle told the king of his daughter betrayal and instructed him to destroy her before uh, he would be safe. So the king pulled out his sword and beheaded Prince Zhou. With that, the golden turtle took the king below the water and disappeared, which means now uh, King Anzingvu killed his daughter and he went to uh, the sea with golden turtle and God. Guided by the goose father that um, Princess Cho uh, put on her way, Prince Tui followed the trail and arrived the seashore shortly only to find the body of his beloved wife lying in a pool of blood and King Andungvung now where to found. Princess Zhou blood flowed down the ocean floor where the oyster swallowed it, amazingly transforming them into pearls. In deep remorse and grief over the death of Prince Chose, he drowned himself as well in order to be with her in eternity. Which means now Prince Tui also uh, suicide to die with his beloved. So to be uh, more easy to understand, this story basically about um, a king, he got um, a magic crossbow from God and then he, he was really confident that he could do everything with that uh, and he could um, protect his kingdom from invader forever. But uh, of course, the enemy, uh, they will never leave us alone. Uh, the king of enemy, Chinese, uh, he led his son to marry um, King Andungbung daughter. And uh, um, he and he replaced the magic crossbow to a normal crossbow, and of course, King Andrew cannot protect um, uh, the country, the kingdom anymore. So uh, he has to um, he has to ask for help again. But then he figure out uh, the problem that made. Uh, out this conflict is um, also because of his daughter and then he uh, killed her at the end um, just the prince and the princess all died and King Anzibung went to the ocean with uh, the turtle and uh, uh, the god and of course, uh, we were loose and uh, chi China got our kingdom again. So 
um, basically this story is um, tell us about um, uh, we we always uh, have to raise uh, vigilance against all plots and trick of the people uh, also does not rest in victory would mean we don't be too confident we have to always prepare for um, uh, every danger um, that we could face um, it's so i think this story is a good story uh, we will know more about history about culture that um you know love is something really meaningful even um in the past or now and also uh i think this is a good story that i want to share to my listener and thank you for story listening that i used to read and hear it from my grandparents many old people and adults used to tell me if I lie down right after I finish my meal, I will become a cow. When I was really young, I really believed that, so I had never lied down right after I finished eating. And I was really curious if I really became a cow. Well, I do it almost every day now, and I haven't become a cow yet. They actually just mean don't be lazy, but I like to be lazy. It's so peaceful when you do nothing, isn't it? But anyway, long, long time ago, there was a man who became an actual cow since he was way too lazy. Let me tell you the story of how to become an actual cowboy. Once upon a time, there was a young man who was lazy and always wanted to play and doing nothing. He didn't listen to his parents, he didn't work at all and he wanted to live a cow life because he thought what cows are doing in their life is just eating grass and that's it. He really wanted to become a cow and so one day an old man was passing by his house and the man had a cow shaped mask. The mask attracted the young man's attention so the old man told him that if people wear the mask then they can become a cow. The young man was very fascinated by that, so he wore the mask on and he suddenly really became a cow. He was so, so confused, so he wanted to take the mask off, but he couldn't take it off. And then the old man took him to a market where he sell cows, crops, and so on. The old man was actually um, selling people by using this method. So the young man was on the market as a product and he was actually being sold. When the old man sold a cow, he warned the buyer that if the cow eats radish, then he's going to die. Then to make the cow work, you have to whip him on. So he was obviously sold and um, he should start working at a farm. He worked so hard every day. Actually, he had to work hard not to get whipped. His life as a cow was so terrible. Um, he worked so hard every day. Sometimes he got whipped and only had grass for food. He shouted every day to get help, but of course no one would understand. He regretted a lot actually about not working when he was a human and thinking of escaping. He also missed his family a lot and finally he thought he would rather die than living a cowboy life. And you know what? Um, the one thing that crossed his mind was radish. Do you remember he will die if he eats radish? Fortunately, Actually, I don't know if it's fortunately or unfortunately, there was a bunch of radish beside him and he decided to eat the radish. He ate the whole radishes and seemed like he's gonna die soon. 
But the interesting thing is he turned back to human. It was unreal. He cried so hard because he was so happy that he became a human again. And he finally went to his home. And you know what? He decided to work. After that, he has never lived a lazy boy life anymore. He started appreciating his life and realized the importance of being productive. So this is a really old story. Even my parents told me that they heard it from their grandparents. And there is a book about it. And I remember I read it as well. I think the purpose of this story is productiveness. I would say um, culturally, Koreans don't like laziness. We're Asian, so of course we work hard. I guess that's why this story is this famous in South Korea. Since this story is being told mouth to mouth, there is also a different version of this story with the same outline. It wasn't that hard to find this story because it is famous, everyone knows it from their childhood and so do I. But I guess it is not universally discussed. As we value productiveness a lot more than other countries do, that is why it's specially discussed within my culture. I think it's a great story to read since it provides the reason why Koreans work so hard. Also, the fact that the young man became an actual cow because he was lazy is quite interesting. I've never read this kind of story in Western culture based book. And also, I'd say it is a good way to make your children study when they're playing too hard. Um, that's actually what my mom did. It's actually lying down right after you finish eating is not really good for your health. It could make your digestive system bad. So don't do that and have a productive day today. Thank you for being my listeners. This was Ali and I will come back soon with another story. Bye-bye. See the you. The Tale of the Wise Serpent. Before we start the story, I'm going to briefly talk about the background of the story, the history, and some basic information. The Tale of the Wise Serpent is a story deeply rooted in Chinese folklore and has been part of the culture for centuries. Dating back to the Tang Dynasty around AD 600 and 900, this story is passed down through many generations and there are a lot of different versions. But the one I'm going to tell today is a version that is passed down most widely and popularly. The Tale of the White Serpent is often told during the Dragon Ball Festival because the event of the story coincides with this time, making it a popular tale heard by everyone during the holiday. Without further ado, let's begin. A long, long time ago, there lived a white snake and a black snake. After thousands of years of practice, they became the spirit of a snake. Initially, this two snake was stranger to each other. However, one day, the black snake found itself in danger, and the white snake came to its rescue. From the moment on, they become best friends, with the black snake willing to serve the white snake for life. The spirit of the white snake was named Bai Su Zhen, and the spirit of the black snake was named Xiao Qing. Our story begins on a raining day at West Lake. Bai Su Zhen and Xiao Qing transformed into two beautiful women and went for a walk by the lake. Suddenly, the rain started pouring heavily. Xu Xian, a young scholar who, who was about to take a boat when he noticed two gorgeous women standing next to the lake. He offered his umbrella to them and stood in the rain himself. At that moment, Bai Su Zhen fell in love with Xi Xian. However, what Xi Xian didn't know was that this beautiful woman was no ordinary woman, but a wise snake spirit who had acquired immortality and human characteristic after centuries of Taoist practice. She transformed herself into a human to experience the mortal world. A few days later, 
Using the excuse of returning the umbrella, Bai Suzhen visit the pharmacy where Xi Shen worked to see him again. Over the few visits, they gradually become attracted to each other. Finally, Xi Shen and Bai Suzhen fall deeply in love and they marry. Their marriage is anything but ordinary. It's a proof of the power of love to transcend the boundary between the human and supernatural world. After their marriage, they open a medical shop and live together with Xiao Qing, also live with them as well. One day, Xu Xian bought the supply from the host seller, but that evil old man sold Xu Xian a lot of rotten herb. He has no idea about what to do with this useless inventory, and suddenly there are so many passion when to buy, want to buy the medicine from him because the plague spread in the town. To save them, Bai Su Zhen used her magical power to transform the rotten herb, curing everyone. Even the evil supplier ended up buying herb from Xi Xian. Following this event, they used Bai Su Zhen magical power to heal various illnesses. But of course, Bai Su Zhen didn't tell Xu Shen she was not a human but a wise snake. Claiming her exceptional skill in medicine is a secret to their success. One day, a Buddhist monk named Fa Hai visited the medical shop to buy some medicine. Before he even entered the door, he sensed that the woman inside was not a human. Fa Hai opposed their love because he believed it was unnatural for human and supernatural being to be together. So he decided to separate them. Fa Hai first tricked Xi Xian into giving Bai Su Zhen a poison that would force her to reveal her true form. Just give this drink to your wife. If you believe she is a human, it won't hurt her. Oh, and by the way, you have to give her the potion on June 10 at midnight, or it won't work. Say bye, Fahai. Although Xi Xian was skeptical, he followed Fahai instruction on June 10, which coincided with the Dragon Bow Festival. He gave the potion to Bai Su Zhen. As soon as the potion touched her lip, Bai Su Zhen immediately felt dizzy. She ran into her room and hid in bed. Within minutes, she transformed into a white snake. Xi Xian followed her and was shocked to see Bai Su Zhen turn into a white snake in a bed. The revelation terrified Xi Xian, causing him to die from shock temporarily. Bai Su Zhen transformed back into a human. After Xiao Qing returned home and gave her the curd. When Bai Su Zhen saw her husband, Xi Xian, lying dead on the floor, she was heartbroken. Even though she knew her husband might not love her anymore, since she was not human, she still decided to save her husband from death by finding the magical herb that is said to only grow in the deep mountain of Ume. So, Bai Su Zhen braved the storm of Mountain Ume to find a magical herb to revive Xi Xian. And at that time, Bai Su Zhen was actually pregnant. Even though it is so dangerous to let a pregnant woman to the deep mountain to look for the magical herb, she still does it because of her love for Xi Xian. When Bai Su Zhen arrived in the deep mountain, it turned out that the magical herb is not growing in the mountain, but is kept by the queen mother of the west in the castle. At first, the queen mother did not want to give out the magical herb leading to the battle that lasted for days. Finally, Bai Su Zhen, unwavering love for Xu Xian, moved the queen mother of the west. She gave her the magical herb. Bai Su Zhen then returned home immediately to revive her husband. After Xu Xian came back to life, 
he and his wife by Susan live happily ever after. The end. No, just kidding. A lot more happened. A lot more thing happened after he came back to life. After Shi Xian was revived, he and her wife solved the misunderstanding and waited for the birth of their child. However, the Buddhist monk Fa Hai, who had given Shi Xian the poison, kidnapped him and imprisoned him in Jingshan Temple. When Fa Hai found out that Shi Xian and Bai Su Zhen were still married, Fa Hai was so angry that Shi Xian didn't listen to him. Bai Su Zhen decided to rescue her husband, enlist the help of some shrimp and crab soldier from the deep sea. But of course, if your reinforcement are only shrimp and crab, how can you beat a monk with magic? Obviously, Bai Su Zhen loves the battle. In the meantime, her water broke. She's going to have a baby. Fahai doesn't want to let innocent people get involved, which is her baby. So he allowed Bai Susan give birth to her son by the lake. After she gave birth, Fahai imprisoned her in the Linfen Bengoda, a real building construct in AD 975. And that is the real story. It's still real ending of the story which is not a happy one but reflect the historical context of its origin so when people visit Lingfen Pangoda today they often remember this pointed tale Bai Su Zhen aka the white snake is not an evil spirit but an ordinary person who seek her love People who wrote the first version of the tale of the white serpent didn't write the main character Bai Su Zhen as an evil bad white snake, but instead wrote her as a person who seeks normal love. And this can reflect back then people want to break the rule where marriage were arranged by parents or made for family benefit, rather than chosen by the individual themselves. Therefore, this story became popular among ordinary people because it is close to reality. Although the ending of the story by Su Zhen and Xi Xian didn't get together, it shows that in real life back then, people wanted to chase what they love, but they have to compromise to the reality. So that's why the ending is a sad ending. All right, so last, let's talk about, about my opinion, opinion about this story so to be honest although i have heard of the story before i almost forget what it is about so when i searching for the story to share to you guys and when i found the story i read the story again and the feeling is different from before i quite enjoy the story it is really interesting and like a normal love story the ending is sad which make me even enjoy it more or it would just in another story with lively with a story with the ending of lively happily ever after so just really nothing special if it's like that so this tale with its sad ending and historical connection gave me a lot of insight I hope you have the same feeling as me and enjoy the story as well. So see you next time. Bye.